Okay, I know I've done a couple of these DaVinci Resolve versus Premiere Pro videos before, but hear me out. First of all, all those other videos were comparing the free version of Resolve with Premiere Pro. This time we're looking at Studio, which has more features and capabilities than the free version. Second, both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro have gone through updates since May of 2019, which is when I published the last one. Last, I'm actually using a computer that can run both of these NLEs well. Seriously, do you know how many people told me that if I had a better computer, I'd like Premiere Pro a lot more? A lot. It was, it just, I can't. So here's what we're gonna do, all right? We're going to compare DaVinci Resolve Studio and Premiere Pro in the four main areas of video editing, cutting, color grading, audio, and effects. And we're going to look also at resources for support, pricing, all of that good stuff. And on top of all of that, I'm not going to try to tell you what to buy. That's not my job. At the end of the day, the best thing for you to do is just try them both and make your own decisions. My job is just to give you the information so you can make a more informed decision, okay? Here we go. Let's start off with price. DaVinci Resolve Studio costs $299. You only have to pay that once and you get all the updates for free. I don't know if that will always be the case, but that's the case as of today. Premiere Pro is a standalone app, costs $20.99 a month, and that will give you all the features and the updates, but if you want things like the ability to make high quality effects, video noise reduction, or professional audio editing, you'll also need to get After Effects and Audition, and at that point, you might as well get the whole Creative Cloud suite, which ranges from $79.49 a month to $599.88 for an annual subscription. Now, at a glance, you would think that a one-time payment for DaVinci Resolve would be the clear winner, right? But you have to understand that with a Creative Cloud subscription, you're not just getting Premiere Pro, After Effects, and Audition. That subscription also gets you 20 plus apps, cloud storage, fonts, access to Adobe Portfolio, where you can put together a portfolio website, and even Behance, which is kind of like a creative social network. So if all that other stuff is important to you, Adobe might be the way to go here. Full transparency, I actually have both. I have DaVinci Resolve Studio and the full Creative Cloud subscription because a lot of those Adobe tools are actually pretty awesome. Another thing about pricing, for whatever reason, you can't purchase DaVinci Resolve Studio directly from Blackmagic. Design. You have to go through an authorized retailer like BH Photo, which is admittedly kind of weird. What makes it even weirder is that most of those authorized retailers, instead of just emailing you a license key, they mail you the license key on a card which can take up to a couple weeks to arrive. For the life of me, I don't know why they do it that way. If someone has the answer, please let me know in the comments. But to make up for that, if you buy Blackmagic Design cameras or editing consoles, you get DaVinci Resolve Studio for free, which is pretty cool. Let's move on to the UI. UI stands for user interface, by the way, in case you didn't know. Now you do. The UIs in DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro are actually pretty different. With DaVinci Resolve, everything is done on different pages within the same software. Each page is laid out differently with different sets of tools, and there's only a certain amount of customization available. The downside to this is that if you don't like the layout of a certain page, you can only tweak it so much. The upside is that it will be easier to get used to and harder to get lost. This is honestly one of the reasons why I ended up switching. Premiere Pro is almost more like one of those drag and drop website builders, like Squarespace. No, this video is not sponsored by Squarespace, but they are pretty awesome. Call me. Basically, Premiere Pro is made up of modules, and for the most part, you can move those modules around any way you want so it fits your workflow. They also have pre-made layouts for basic editing, color, audio, and effects, but you're not tied down to that layout. So with Adobe, you kind of have the opposite pros and cons. You can basically have any layout you want, but if you're new and you start playing around with it too much, you can easily find yourself a little lost. Again, this all comes down to preference. Some people like the level of customization you get with Premiere. Personally, the DaVinci Resolve UI just clicked with my brain better. I'm an anarchist that needs structure. Moving on. When it comes to basic editing, both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro have everything you need. You can cut, trim, delete, ripple delete, separate audio from video, add keyframes, crop, zoom, add tracks, 
you get the idea. They both have customizable keyboard shortcuts as well, although with Resolve on top of their default keyboard shortcuts, they also have presets based on the shortcuts of the other major NLEs, including Premiere, to make it easier on you when you switch. Really, the only difference between Resolve and Premiere when it comes to basic editing is the layout of all the tools, and without trying them both, there's no real way to know which one is better for you. Luckily, there's a free version of Resolve and a free trial of Premiere, so you can try them both out to decide which one you like. Let's move on to color grading, which is where we really start to see Resolve and Premiere pull away from each other, and with good reason. Up until 2012, DaVinci Resolve was purely a color grading platform, and it was the choice of many professional colorists. Still is, actually, and that's because DaVinci Resolve is probably the most complete set of color grading tools out of any professional NLE. Now, that's not to say that Premiere Pro doesn't have color grading tools. In fact, it's quite the opposite. They have all of the basic tools like color wheels, curves, sliders, and even secondary wheels, which are very handy for correcting skin tones. And in recent years, they've added additional tools like hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, hue versus luma, and luma versus saturation, which are all incredibly powerful color grading tools. The big difference between color grading in Resolve and color grading in Premiere is in the workflow. In Premiere, all of the grading is done in the Lumetri color panel. Now, you can add layers of the Lumetri color effect, which is handy for going back and correcting different parts of your grade, but just be aware that each new layer of the grade is affecting the layer that came before it. With Resolve, color grading is done on the color page and everything is done on nodes. If you use Premiere, just think of nodes as layers of the Lumetri color effect with one very important difference. Unlike Lumetri color, there are multiple types of nodes that interact differently with each other, allowing for more accurate accurate tweaking of your image. Again, this is a matter of personal preference, but no matter which way you go, rest assured that you'll have the tools you need in order to get a good looking grade on your footage. Okay, let's move on to audio, which is another area where Premiere and Resolve are very, very different. Again, both Premiere and Resolve have all the tools you need in order to get a great sounding video. In fact, there are some audio tools in Premiere that I wish Resolve had. They go about the audio editing process in totally different ways. Ways. Premiere Pro is what you might expect out of an NLE when it comes to audio. It's a video editing app that happens to have a lot of tools like EQ, compressors, DSers, and limiters. All you have to do is drag and drop the effects onto the video clip and tweak them. DaVinci Resolve, on the other hand, has the Fairlight page, which is a fully functional DAW, or digital audio workstation, built right in with a fully functional mixer, as well as all the necessary audio tools that you need in order to get a great sounding video. There are some other key differences between Resolve and Premiere when it comes to audio. In the plus side for Resolve, you can do edits at the track level, meaning I can drop an EQ or a compressor onto a track instead of an individual clip, and when I dial in that effect, it will affect every clip on that audio track. I can even do that with the master track. Premiere Pro only lets you edit at the clip level. If I wanted to edit an entire track at once, I would have to nest all of the audio clips on that track and then add the effects I need to that nested clip. But if I wanted to edit at the track level with Adobe, I could use a dynamic link to send all of my audio over to Audition and then send it back to Premiere when I'm done. Audition is Adobe's DAW and it's actually my preferred audio editing app when I'm doing audio only work. On the plus side for Premiere, they have this amazing tool called Essential Audio where you can label an audio clip as either dialogue, music, sound effects, or ambience, click a button, and Premiere will automatically normalize the clip based on broadcast standards. This can give you a great starting point for an audio mix, and I really wish DaVinci Resolve had a similar tool. Again, even with the different approaches to audio, both Premiere and Resolve have everything you need in order to make great sounding videos. One isn't necessarily better than the other, as Someone who came from an audio background, I personally prefer the flexibility of DaVinci Resolve's Fairlight page over what Premiere has to offer. Even when I was using Premiere as my main editor, I was doing the bulk of my audio work in Audition, but that's just my personal preference. I encourage you to try both and see which one you like better. Now it's time to move on to effects, and when I say effects, I mean actual special effects. Both Premiere and DaVinci have the simpler stuff like titles and transitions built in, but when it comes to compositing special effects, there is a big difference between the two. First off, DaVinci Resolve has the Fusion page, which is a fully functional node-based compositor built right into the software. So 
without switching applications, I can composite whatever effects I want. Premiere Pro, on the other hand, doesn't have any compositing capabilities. In order to get that, you'll have to use a dynamic link to send clips over to After Effects, which is quickly becoming an industry standard for compositing. And unlike the node-based layout, like most other compositors on the market, uses layers to get the job done. In fact, you also need After Effects to do things like motion tracking and video noise reduction, both of which can be done from the color page in DaVinci Resolve. I found this kind of interesting because I personally use both of those tools regularly in Resolve, even if I'm not doing any compositing whatsoever. So I don't understand why Premiere doesn't have them built in. If, if you have the answer, let me know in the comments. Now, I'm not much of an effects guy, so I'm not going to dive too much deeper into the differences between Fusion and After Effects in this video, but I am actively learning how to use both tools a lot better, and I'll be doing a full comparison between the two in the future, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. So from a features standpoint, both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro have the tools you need in order to get a great looking and great sounding video. However, in order to get the full functionality of DaVinci Resolve with Premiere Pro, you'll actually need to add in other Adobe apps like Audition, After Effects, and in some cases, even Media composer, which is why if you're kind of a do-it-all editor, you'll want to get the full Creative Cloud subscription if you plan on sticking with Premiere. And now that we've gone through some of the features, let's talk about some of the more technical differences between Premiere and Resolve. First off, both Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve support multiple GPUs. However, in Puget Systems benchmark testing, DaVinci Resolve showed a significantly larger difference in performance using multi-GPUs than Premiere Pro did. Also, Premiere, along with other Adobe products that support multiple GPUs tend to get a little confused if all of your video cards aren't the same, whereas you're more likely to be able to mix and match without issue and resolve. Another key difference between Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve is how projects are stored and structured. While both have the ability to choose where you want to save your projects and your cache, DaVinci Resolve stores everything in a database where Premiere Pro saves everything, even the projects, as individual files. This makes finding and moving projects easier and simpler with Premiere, but it also makes disk optimization a lot more important than it is with Resolve. For more information on that, Puget Systems, the company who built the computer that I used to edit my videos, had me on their live stream a couple weeks ago, and we spent some time talking about disk optimization. I'll link that below. Now, you'll notice that I haven't touched on the stability of either program in this video, and that's largely because the stability of both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro depend on how well your system is optimized for that program. Users on both sides have people who report stability problems and people who say they have never had a problem with a project freezing up or crashing. And I can personally attest to having stability issues with both. However, I have found that there is a direct correlation between how good my computer is and the amount of issues I have with either program. So, you know, there's that. So what's the final verdict? Should you go with the all-in-one option of DaVinci Resolve or the more fragmented Adobe Creative Cloud Suite? As usual, the answer is it depends on you and which workflow works best for you. There are upsides and downsides for both. DaVinci Resolve might be better on a lower end computer because you don't have to deal with sending projects between apps. However, having separate apps for compositing and audio means different, more specialized development teams. So updates are more likely to have bigger and better new features that come along with it. But all in all, the best thing you can do is try them both like I did and stick with the one that fits you better. Now, if you want to learn more about why I switched over to DaVinci Resolve from Premiere, I covered that in my last comparison video between DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. You can go ahead and check that out right here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that will make you a better video editor, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.